Hi everyone, welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. I'm Michelle Vernay Hyatt. It has been a couple months since I've put together Tutorial Tuesday. My apologies. Once I pivoted and was able to stand up online classes and virtual classes and such, my calendar filled up with all sorts of commitments and, and lectures and all good stuff. But I wanted to try and get back to doing some Tutorial Tuesdays. I think it's doable for me to do one a month. So I'm going to try and shoot for the second Tuesday of each month and bring you uh, for the next couple of months a favorite tool each month and then feature some quilts that I've used it in. So for today I'm going to talk about the V-Block, the Studio 180 V-Block tool which makes the Peaky and Spike or 5440 and Fight Block. Um, I've used it in tons of quilts. I'm going to go through each of those with you. The one I have behind me today is Sparkle, um, and I used it in those little tiny stars, and it's really easy. Whether or not you are making a block that's two inches big or you're making a block that's six inches big, uh, it is perfect for it, which is one of the reasons I absolutely adore the Studio 180 tools, because they have multiple sizes. So, I am going to take you through a couple of my patterns that I've used the V-Block in, and then we're going to talk about the shape and how you can identify it in some blocks. And then I'm going to take you through step-by-step step making one of the units. So sit back and enjoy. So the V-Block is one of my favorite tools. I'd actually put it in my top five tools. So in my family traits pattern, I used it in my sisterhood and brotherhood blocks. In these units, the side triangle is made with background. Now you can also have that reverse, which is more common showing the star points. Here in my bloom star and my V chain, you can see how the side triangles are made with the bright fabric. Either one works. The V block makes the Peaky and Spike or the 5440 and Fight block, where you have center triangles and side triangles. Let me show you a few of the patterns I've used it in. Family Traits, which I'm featuring today, comes in two quilt sizes. Sunset on the Sound has three sizes and is used with a bunch of other units, but just turns out beautifully. Bloom, I featured this a few months ago in Tutorial Tuesday as a free class. That has three sizes. Spring Bouquet is one of my older patterns. Um, it utilizes V-Block and Corner Beam. It comes together beautifully as well. And then here's Sparkle. This was my version with the white background I showed you behind me earlier, the black background version. Love it. Love it. Here's Com C's. This is in uh, three quilt sizes as well, and it uses the V-block along the border to finish those stars. And last but not least, my Timeless with a Twist Grow Mom's Blessing. It's used in the setting triangle. Very similar to how I used it in Family Traits. Now let's talk about an overview of the Studio 180 V-block tool. Let's talk to the tool first and then I'll give you a demo of it so you can see it in action. When you are going to cut your side triangles and your center triangles, we're going to use the right hand side. For those side triangles, we will use the bold line and the appropriate size line. We'll always be lining that up. When we're doing our second cut of our side triangles, we'll rotate our ruler 190 degrees and then use the diagonal line on the other side. Now when cutting the center triangles, we're going to use the dotted line and the appropriate size line for our first cut. And then we will use the diagonal strip that comes off that tip after we flip our fabric. It'll all make sense in a, in a little bit. Now when we trim down our unit, we're going to use what I call the square side of the tool to trim it down. First, we're going to focus on the finish side of our unit, lining up the V with our appropriate finish side seams. And then we're going to square it up, utilizing the cut down side the, with the cut size. So now let me take you through a demo. I'm going to utilize the block, or excuse me, the unit that I used when making my family. So as I stated earlier, we are going to use this side of the ruler primarily to do the cutting of our strips. For my family traits pattern, we are going to cut a medium scale print to be inside of the V-block unit, which is the center triangle. 
To cut the center triangles, you traditionally start with a fold. And you want to make that fold as deep as needed for your particular size. Since I'm making a four inch unit for my family traits, I am going to find the four inch finish unit on my V-block ruler and line that up with the bottom of my strip if I'm right-handed and I'm going to have the fold be on the dotted line that says fold line. Now you want to make sure that you are clearing your salvage if you've left your salvage on, which I always do, and you want to take this dotted line and actually just push it a little bit so that it's on the waterfall, meaning that it's on the edge that's falling off of that fold. And then you're going to use your best rotary cutting skills and keep your rotary straight up and down, as this is the precision cut. You'll open it up, and you want to make sure that you have a point on both of those. If you didn't push your ruler far enough over on that waterfall, you might end up with a blunt tip and need to clean it up. Next, we're going to flip the fabric, and then we're going to line up that diagonal line that comes off the top as well as our finished size unit on the bottom. In this case, it's four inches. And then I'm going to make my cut. I'm going to continue doing that flip and fold and flip and fold until I get to the end of the strip. So for the left-hander, you're going to put your salvage side to the right. Go ahead and do your fold. And then I actually, I place the ruler upside down. Once again, I'm going to make sure that that dotted line is on the waterfall of my fold. And I'm going to make sure that the four inch finish unit is on top. And that it clears the salvage. Go ahead and unfold, and I stick that in my pile. Once again, you would flip and line back up. I like to use my ruler handles. They help me pick up my rulers with the Invisigrip. So I'm lining it up off that diagonal line, and the top of my strip is still on the four inch finish unit. So this is the only ruler that you really flip your strip um, instead of rotating your ruler when you're doing the cuts. Now let's talk about the side triangles. For the side triangles, we're going to keep our strip folded just as we did for the center triangles, but we're not going to fold it to start. We're just going to clean off that salvage end. I brought in a dark mat to hopefully help you be able to see the white fabric in this case. All right, so my righties, we're now going to use the bold line. And the bold line is going to go on that just cleaned up edge and again, in this case, my four inch finish unit is going to go on the bottom of the strip. And once again, I'm going to use my best rotary cutting skills, keep my rotary nice up and down. Then I'm going to turn my ruler 180 degrees and there's a diagonal line that comes off the edge of that where you see the six and a half. For the newer V-blocks, they're actually marked. But this is just a, a the only diagonal line that comes off that corner with the six and a half. And you're going to line that up with the just cut edge. 
and then in this case the 2 is actually on the top of my strip. These numbers are for another purpose. It just so happens that for this size, the two falls on it. Once again, I'm going to use my best rotary skills and make that cut. Now what I like to do is when I pick these up off the mat, is I like to, at this point, since I know this is a folded strip, I like to place these so that the right sides are up. So I'm not trying to figure it out later as to which one is the right side. And you're going to create a square. So with your two side triangles and your center triangles, you want to make sure you're forming a square. Let's cover the lefties. The lefties are going to, once again, have their ruler, what I would call upside down. You're going to put the bold line on that just cleaned up edge. And the four inch finish is going to be at the top of your strip and you're going to use your best rotary skills and then you're going to turn the ruler 180 degrees and your six and a half is going to be at the top you're going to line it up that diagonal line that comes off with the just cut edge and then the two the two line here is going to hit on the bottom of the strip and you're going to cut once again when you pick these up you're going to open them up and place them so that they're forming a square with your right sides up. Next, we're going to sew these. So in order to do that, you want to, I always tell my students, piece out. The V is out from you and you are going to want to see it, flip it, and sew it. So you would see it, flip it, you're going to line it up and it should match perfectly. If it does not match perfectly, you may have turned your triangle because they're not equal on all sides. These two sides are longer and this is a short side. So make sure you're taking care when you're trimming and cutting and placing. So I'm going to put this end to end and I'm going to lay down my best quarter inch, not a scant quarter inch, my best quarter inch. And then I want to be extremely careful when pressing. So when I stitched, I stitched with my triangle on top. That's because this was the precision cut. And I put down my best quarter inch. I did shorten my stitch length to 2-0. Then we're going to go ahead and break these apart. And now to press them, we're going to press them always towards the side triangle. And I know in this case, my unit is reversed and I have background that's as, as my side triangle. And a lot of you will think, oh, I really don't like to press towards my background. But it's essential in this particular case. You will not be able to not have um, it pressed to the side triangle. There will just be too much bulk in that point later. So what I'm doing is I'm setting my seam finger pressing, and then pressing. What that's doing is it's giving me a nice crisp seam and it's ensuring that I don't have any lips. In other words, something that's not quite pressed completely open, where you have like a little lip. So next I'm gonna sew on my other side triangle. I usually turn my plate around and then I see it, flip it, I'm going to match that point and then my side triangle matches along that edge. Again, if it doesn't match perfect, you're probably putting the triangle on the wrong side. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and put down my best quarter inch. All right, it's time to press that other side. I went ahead and again stitched with my triangle on top. I'm going to set my seam, finger press, and press. I like to give it a good mist of best press at this point because I know in the next step I'm going to trim it down. I'm going to finish doing this and then we're going to talk about trimming it down. All right, so it's now time to trim down. Once again, if you're right-handed, you're going to do piece out. The V should be 
coming out from you. You're going to come down the corner edge and find your finish size. In my case, it's four. I'm going to make sure my seam lines are lining up with where my side triangle meets my center triangle, and I'm gonna trim the two exposed sides. I have Invisigrip on the back of my ruler, so I'm gonna give a press down. I'm gonna come up the side, and then I'm gonna come in about a half inch in, do a little roll back, and go forward. That prevents me from nicking my blade on the corner of that ruler. Then I'm gonna turn my unit 180 degrees and now I'm going to line up my cut size which is four and a half on the bottom and the sides that I just cut. Now I should have a TP and it should hit that crosshair perfectly. Once again I'm pushing down because I have Invisigrip coming up the side, coming up across the top, come in about a half inch, roll back and go forward and that gives me a perfect V-block. Let's talk left-handed. Left-handed are going to do piece out to the side so that it's facing your left hand. You're going to turn your ruler so that the pointy side is towards your belly. You're going to come in and line up the four V, the four finish. Yours just happens to be sideways. And in the same manner, you're going to push down and cut up the side and then come across the top. Once again, I come in about a half inch, roll back and go forward. I'm then going to turn my unit 180 degrees and line up my just cut edge on the side and the bottom here with my four and a half cut size making sure that my sideways TP is hitting that crosshair. And I'm going to finish cutting those last two sides. Now I have a perfect V unit or perfect V block that no matter when you place them up against each other, they're going to match perfectly because they've been precision cut. Let me finish trimming and then I'll talk to you about the two blocks in my family traits. So my family traits pattern has two blocks, sisterhood and brotherhood, and there's a border block which is just a partial brother block, brotherhood block. Now my sisterhood block, I recommend using a large scale print. And what this will do is it'll make your quilt look really scrappy. Um, so it's a perfect place to use up something that has some really large print. You just have to be careful when you're placing uh, laying out your block. So what I usually do is whenever I'm working with a large print is I cut a couple extra strips. Um, and so here I can play around with that I'm going to place these in the corner that I sort of want a balance within my block. So I had a lot of blocks that had a lot of pink and I had a lot of blocks that had a lot of yellow. So I just want to make sure that I was balancing them when laying them out. Next, the center, I highly recommend considering fussy cutting. So in this case, I cut a strip of butterflies. I cut it a little larger than it needed to be. And then I precision cut my butterflies out and place them so that they would be pretty much in the center of my unit, my four and a half inch unit. So this is my sisterhood block. My brotherhood block also uses the V block in the same placement. And it also uses a fussy cut center, although it doesn't have to be fussy cut. I liked using a fussy cut one. And then in the corners of this one, it's just background. Which is sort of what gives it that pants look, which is why I called it brotherhood. <laughs> Both of these blocks will be put together the same way. I go ahead and put them into rows and then stitch my rows together. 
Whenever you're working with the V-block, my recommendation is, is to always sew with the V-block on top if you can. So in this case, I would go ahead, I'd see it, flip it, and stitch it. When I got to this one, I would go ahead and turn it over so that I'm stitching with my V-center on top so that I could see that stitch line. Ta-da! Here they are put together. So you can see they come together really quick. It's a great stash buster. This is the sisterhood and brotherhood blocks that are in my family traits. So thank you so much for joining me for Tutorial Tuesday. Once again, it'll be on the second Tuesday of each month, and I'll feature my favorite tool of the month.